Hello, my humans. We are going to talk about measuring some angles. That sounds so exciting, Mr. Butterworth. It does. I bet we talk about some angles. How did you guess? Because it says so. Oh. Ooh. What is an angle? Where have we seen them in real life? And what are some facts that we know about angles? That seems um, like a, a very existential question. It does, and that's actually kind of a really hard question, or at least to me, that's a really hard question, which might just be because I'm thinking about this mathematically. That happens sometimes. Um, to me, an angle is all about like rotating things and a measure of how much things are spinning. So that if I'm facing one way, I'm going to put eyes there so that we can see. And then suddenly that version of me that I can't pick up because it's text. Does that work? Ah, <laughs> there we go. Uh, if I'm spinning that version of me, the amount of spin that I have to me is kind of that angle idea. I was just thinking about taking the stuff that we've talked about before in our like segments, rays and lines discussion and fitting that into angles. Hmm. So did I kind of think about this in the real life part first? Yes. The angle through which you like rotate and stuff like that. And if you're doing any sort of sailing or measuring outside or anything like that. Yes. Cool. Um, so then we've been using angles for a while. We know that they look something like this. Those are rays. I learned that. We did. Uh, in fact, uh, that's something that we use to help kind of define what an angle is geometrically. Are those opposite rays or are opposite rays something different? I think we said that opposite rays were two rays that had a common endpoint and go in opposite directions. Oh, that's right. They made a line. They made a line. I forgot that. Mm. So this looks that like an a, angle too, though. Would that be an angle also that you just drew? I think so. I mean, it's uh, an angle that a lot of things that we know is that straight lines make uh, 180 degrees. Uh, that's something that we tend to know from like middle school geometry stuff. Uh, and I bet we even have a name for this. Um, if we stay on the straight and narrow, we'll get there. I think so too. Uh, could we just call this like a straight angle? We could. That would be fun. All right. So we're going to call this a straight angle because it's opposite rays that make a straight line. By the way, all lines are straight. That's uh, true. I heard there were cute angles also. Hmm. And why are they cute? Because they're so small. Oh. So that would be different than, let's say, a really big angle. Yes, you'd have to be obtuse to not understand that. It's true. Uh, so this would be an obtuse angle. Yes. There's also a right angle, which again is because us left-handers are oppressed by society. And this is called a right angle. If we were all lefties, that'd be, that'd be a, a left angle. Oh, I'm sure that would absolutely be the case. It seems kind of sinister to me, though. Um, <laughs> Wow, so there are all kinds of different angles that we know. Uh, do we know any numbers that go with these? Uh, you mean like ranges of numbers or specific numbers? Either, because I think some of those apply to each one. We said this one was 180 degrees. Oh, so the right angle is like half of that, so it's 90 degrees. Okay, and do you think if I put two right angles together, like right next to each other, that would make a straight angle too? It depends on what you mean by right next to each other, but potentially I will go with yes. Well, I was trying to avoid using the math word for that. Um, well, because I, I didn't know if you meant. Uh, I, like meant I meant the word. A right angle here and then a right yeah. angle here. Because those would not mm. be a straight angle. That's true. Although the way but that you drew that, there are some potentially straight angles in there. There are. Um, all right. Uh, how about obtuse angles? Well, those are between 
the right angle and the straight angle. So it's like between, you said a right angle was 90? Yes. And a straight angle was 180. Right. No, that's, that's straight, or, not or, right. Or, or left. <laughs> uh, and then how about an acute angle? That looks smaller than the 90 degree angle. But it's got to be bigger than zero, right? Because we can't have negative angles. That would be crazy talk. For now. What do you mean for now? There are going to be negative angles? There certainly could be. Uh, and that kind of gets back to what I mentioned about uh, what an angle is uh, in terms of rotation. Uh, but yeah. we're not going to get into that right now. We're left now. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so we've talked about like smaller than 90, between 90 and 180. We've talked about 90. We've talked about 180. What about bigger than 180? Those are often called reflex angles, but we don't talk about those very much. Yeah, they're kind of silly. Why do you think they're kind of silly? Well, because couldn't I just go the other way? Yeah. So you're saying that a reflex angle is not so cute yeah. because, because there's an acute angle on the other side? Yes. <laughs> Although I guess it doesn't have to be. No, it could be an obtuse angle. That's why I hesitate yeah. with, the, with the yes. Or a 90 yeah. degree angle. That's true. I'm just going to erase that. That's right. Cool. So we're not really going to talk about reflex angles in this class so much. Not so much. You, you can always go the other way. Yes. Hey, I feel like we've already talked about some of this stuff. We have. And the children are like, okay, move this along, guys. Let's go. You're super slow. Oh, that's why I was trying to slide this over so it's a little bit easier for us to see uh, and got really confused about the highlighting. But Mm. That's fine. So we've got rays of the sides. So my rays that in my lovely picture that I drew are OT and OF. The vertex is the, that point there. So the vertex is point O. So like this guy is the vertex. Yes. It looks or, like the or, bottom or of a V. V. What looks like the bottom of a V? Yeah. Only if you tilt your head a little bit. Yeah, I'm, well, that's what I'm doing right now. If you can see my head's kind of tilty. Yes. So how do we name this? Because we learned how to name segments and rays and lines and stuff. How do we name angles? Well, to me, I really want to be able to describe this exact angle. Um, so I'd like, I think, to name it, plus it's the beginning of my first name, angle T-O-F. Do I need to put that angle thing in front that you put? Uh, I believe that we do, because otherwise we could talk about something different, like a plane. Oh, that that's right. We letters. named a plane with three letters. That's right. Okay. Got it. Uh, and I guess talking about the angle doesn't really matter if I go forwards or backwards. So I could call this angle FOT as well. And that's an okay thing, I think. Yes, that's like with the segments and the lines. But not the rays, but the segments and the lines. Um, and what if I'm feeling really lazy? Like, would it be okay to call this just like angle T? No. How come? Because that is not the vertex of the angle. You notice in FOT and TOF, O is in there. If you're going to name this angle with one letter, you need to use the vertex. Oh, can, I see what you did there. But you can only do that if the angle is not connected to other things. Because otherwise it gets confusing. So if we had like two different angles, uh, I'm going to call this M Q R and Z. You cannot talk about angle R because I don't know what angle you're talking about. Oh, because that could be like this angle. Yes. Or, or that angle. Or that angle. Mm -hmm. Or the other angle. Or that angle. Or the other angle. Or that angle. <laughs> <laughs> I think they get it, Mr. Carlson. Uh, and because it could be all of those things, we don't like naming it that way. True. Cool. Let's keep rolling, friend. 
All right. So we're talking about the interior versus the exterior of an angle. It's like a house where like the interior is the stuff that is within the walls and the exterior would be like the yard. Yeah. There we go. I did it. So you can have like a little garden over here. Oh, now it's going to start drawing pictures. With like some flowers or something. Exactly. Those are lovely. I thought so. I think that's all we need. Beautiful. Oh, look, names for things. Oh, and they named them with numbers. Is that okay? Yes. I can also name it JMK. Could I also name that angle KMJ? Yes. Could we name it angle M? I don't think so, because I don't know if that's that one or that one or that one. Okay, so that'll be bad. Yeah. Two other names for K M. Oh, you erased the picture. <laughs> angle two and angle. Whoops. L M K. I didn't expect that to happen. That was exciting. I did not expect that to happen either. But um, I did it anyway, in spite of you destroying part of the angle. That's okay. So, so K M L K M L. You can also name LMK and you can just name angle two. We use numbers because sometimes we're lazy and we just don't want to use three letters. It's true. What is this tool? This looks That's like a protractor. I was going to call it a half weird sun thing. Nope. Protractor. Are there things that are like amatractors that are like not professional yet? No. Uh, I was going to draw a tractor, but I feel like that would take too long <laughs> and I get yelled at. Uh, so this is used for measuring angles. And if in normal life, we might like hand out protractors to the students in class, but this is not normal life. So we cannot do that. But you use these to measure angles and we'll, we'll assign a Khan Academy or two in which they can do that. So if I had something that was like, is this transparent? It's not going to be help, helpful if this is not transparent. Ooh. That worked because it's on the layer because you made the layer on top. So let's say we move this here. I was going to make that bigger to make it easier. So if we wanted to move this around to measure it, where do we need to place this to, in order to, to get this to line up okay? So you put the center of the bottom piece on the vertex. That's like that. Yeah, and you make sure it line, and that actually lines up pretty well, but you make sure that the edge of the protractor lines up with your angle. And then you just read off what's going on there. So in reading off what's going on here, uh, I've got 180 here. Oh, but that's like where I'm starting from. Yeah, so that's zero. So that's why they have the zero and the 180. You gotta pick which one you're talking about. And, and in I'm this gonna... case, you're talking about the small one. Oh, because it's a small angle. We know it's acute, so it's gonna be the smaller thing. That's 40, there's 45, 46. I'd say that's like 46.5, because it looks like right in the middle. It does, it looks like you did a terrible angle. I will take that. <laughs> oh, good um, work. I love it. Cool. Hey, the protractor postulates. We talked about postulates last time. Those are like accepted statements of fact. Uh, so this is something that we accept. We don't have to show that this has to be true. True. And so this is just a, a visual picture of what basically what you just did. Oh. Oh, man, we have some jokes in here. Mm. I wonder if Mr. Regis made those jokes. Definitely. It's true. And we already talked about this, so I think they can handle this part. I think so, too. Ooh, here's something that's drawn, and it looks like those angles are much cleaner than the one that I drew in. And N is over on the side there. Do you think if we draw the, drag the picture over, it'll let us? Yes. 
did. Uh oh. Did you just throw it out? I didn't try to, but I think since we mo both moved stuff at the same time. <laughs> All right, luckily you can undo it. So NKM, NKM appears to be 35 degrees. Stop moving things on me. Hey. Looking for the marker. 35 degrees. NKM. And then I don't know what that next one's supposed to be because all it says is K. I'm blaming you for that. You ruined everything. So I'm going to do H K J H K J. That looks like 90 degrees. And then L K N. Oh, that one's a hard one. So we got L K N. So we've got to swing like this whole distance, right? Yeah. So that, that looks like a two angle. So it's not 35. No, that seems really small. So would we pick the 145? I think that makes sense to me. Okay. And we'll just say that they had to do the one we skipped. Is that because it's not specific enough? Well, it might have been. I don't know. You threw things away, so who knows what happened. Yeah, I don't think I threw that away, though. <laughs> Okay. But maybe. We're going to get activated again. Classify angle one. It's an angle. I think they wanted us to choose acute, obtuse, right, or straight. Mm. To me, this looks a little bit obtuse. Um, it looks like a right angle probably would be a little bit there. And this looks a little bit bigger than that. I agree. Um, it's pretty then, close though. It is. And then two other names How about measure of angle X, Y, Z, and you have to do the second part. Uh, well, that's not the name for angle X, Y, Z. Uh -uh. That's the measure of angle X, Y, Z, not the name of X, Y, Z. Oh, goodness. I wrote a measure. It's because the next thing said, measure, I know I got confused. I'm sorry. Thank you for clarifying that for me. You're if you welcome. want to talk about the measure, which is like the number we'd put that M in front. Mm, okay. So another name for this could be like angle Y and that's okay here because there's only one angle that we're talking about. Yes. You could also name it angle Z, Y, X. Then we're asked to measure it, but we don't have a protractor, so we're not going to do that. Ooh, we're talking about congruent angles and we know that one angle it, uh, is <laughs> congruent to hot to angle B. <laughs> why did that erase but the other thing erased earlier <laughs> oh i didn't oh that, i don't know i i've got nothing um so angles are congruent basically it's saying angles are congruent if their measures are the same so a 30 degree angle would be congruent to another 30 degree angle true fact have we used the word congruent yet um when we talked about segments we did which we definitely talked about in the video before this. Excellent. I'm glad to hear it. All right. So now we've got the angle addition postulate. Oh, I bet I know um, what's going to go on here. So we've got the, like the yellowy part and then the green part. And my, my, my hypothesis is that the yellowy part and the green part make the whole part. Oh, you're going to color code it? Except you picked blue for green. Yeah, well, it's like that matches better to that. Than I'm not no, even I, to that. I agree. <laughs> um, and I think that's all that's got. That's going to say. I bet we can take a peek under the... Oh, ha, 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 ha. I did it. Why did they use those colors? That upsets me. Um, maybe that's the... I don't know. Could we also say this as... No, I guess we don't want to add, Never mind. So yes, we can add up the two pieces and we get the whole piece, which is what we said. And we can use that to introduce more algebra into our lives. Will that angle also introduce the Green New Deal? Yes. All right. So what I like to do here is I like to write down that angle addition postulate idea when I get to this question. So I write, like to write down R-O-S, which makes me think of the Princess Bride, 
and then TOS, and that is going to equal <laughs> rot. I like it. Well, it's supposed to be a Q, apparently. Oh, well, okay. Let's make those Q fixed. All right. <laughs> so our QS, it says, is 4x minus 20. Okay. TQS is 3x plus 14. Oh, and RQT is 155. Oh, you're color coding it to make it make sense to them. Good thinking. Um, and then I think I know some algebra stuff that we can do. What do you think we should do? Well, I see that the 4x and the 3x are both like x's. Uh, oh, so, so those are friends. They are. So we can take 4 and 3 and we get 7x. I also noticed that minus 20 and plus 14 are in the same family. So it'd be like minus 6. And then that's going to equal whatever's left on the other side. Uh, I also know that to solve this, I need to get x by itself. So we're going to undo a minus 6 by adding 6 to both sides. And then we're going to divide by 7. And that's going to give us 23. That was like magic. He did, he did that mathematics right, right in the cranium there. Whew, look at him. And we did it, Mr. Carlson. We finished. I like it.